Uh, <laughs> we need to, we need are to we high down. quality? We need to relax. <laughs> oh, I need a little bit more beer to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to No Clip. I'm Chad Rowe. I'm JJ Artemis. And I'm Andy Kinnick. And today, we're going to be talking about Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Uh... Which is the longest title for a game uh, that was developed by Spike Chun. Ch- Ch- eh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I, was because... able to, I was able to nail that last week. <laughs> it's because none of the things that are actually said there are words. Yeah, That's sp- the problem. Spike is a word. Soft is a word. Chun. <laughs> Maybe. It's <laughs> developed by Spike Chun Soft and was released in 2017. Um, so. All right, guys. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, I uh, it, it's it's mystery May, mm-hmm. as we're aware. Uh, and I'm a big fan of mystery May. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a long-standing no clip. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Chad is and, on the record. Yeah, and, and saying he loves mystery May. <laughs> in addition to it being mystery May, and us playing nine 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 and uh, this game Danganronpa. V3 Killing Harmony. I also had a birthday this month. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it seemed appropriate that May was a month of reflection for me. (laughs) And uh, as I reflected to, you know, kind of see where I am as a person now versus where I am was as a person last year around Mm -hmm. this time, uh, I I had to come to grips with a a kind of a difficult truth to discover about myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love... Visual novels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish that this wasn't the case. I imagine that it's been lingering uh, deep down with it. I assume I was born this way. Uh, but I, I don't know. Something about the visual no- novel genre, like grips me in the way that, like, uh, a pulp novel or, like, a comic book does. Where it's not necessarily the the writing is so good or the story is so intriguing. Because largely, as we've experienced over the past month, it's not. (laughs) It's just, like, it is exactly... It's like maybe, like, a soap opera where you just want to know what happens to the characters. Like, I just become invested. (laughs) I hope you guys don't think less of me. I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, like we've played a number of them together, like just for fun. Yeah, like we go through your Steam library, and I always feel like I feel like I should play one of these like by myself mm-hmm. and like just try it out. And now I have, and as I suspected, I I, I enjoyed it. So as as we conclude this uh, this meeting of the visual novel support group, mm-hmm. uh, uh, JJ, what, what are your thoughts? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> let, let me just really quick clarify. Yes, literally none of us finish this game, right? Oh yeah, of course, right. of course not. Of okay, course not. All right. Man, this game is so long, so long, and I can't imagine that JJ, you enjoyed this very much more. Than uh, 999. You know, you would be surprised. Alright. You're right, I would not voluntarily spend my time doing this uh, <laughs> after trying it, even though I was the person who suggested this game mm-hmm. uh, and started playing it with like a big smile on my face looking forward because I liked the menu screen and the aesthetic design a whole bunch. Uh, but uh, unlike 999, I thought there was actually like. A kernel of like good game in there that was developed enough and consistently surprising enough. Wasn't that kind of our thesis statement on nine nine nine? Was that it had a good game inside of it, but it was just layered under a bunch of shit. Indeed, it was. And I said enough of a kernel. As it is like in nine nine nine's case, you had to like mine for it. Yeah. Here, it's just like around, but it's just like not seasoned enough. Like there just isn't enough of it. Okay. N- anywhere nearly as much. You, I, I wish they would have just opened with the class trial because the class trial is not only the reason that I bought this game in the first place, but it's like actually cool. Like I, I, I really did think that even though that it wasn't maybe like optimal, that it was it's totally worthwhile to get into these games if for no other reason to try and go through that trial system. Um, but, but yeah, I, uh, I hated 
pretty much every character <laughs> and all the things that were happening around there. But I was behind the game uh, aesthetically, and in, 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 I did not expect to be, especially early, when the characters were quickly revealed to be literal cardboard cutouts, yeah. uh, metaphorically and, and literally. Um, but but yeah, it was it was. It reminded me a whole lot of The World Ends With You if that game, uh, instead of being made by cool people, were made by really lame people. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, but I, I do intend that as a compliment. It's like, it felt like someone else a- aping on a style that I, I genuinely appreciated. Uh, and I, I know that this is oftentimes considered like kind of the leader of a genre that there isn't any, there'll probably be a lot of other places that I can look deeper inside to get the, ver- the like variety of this tone that I really want. Um, I object. To which part? Uh, to I'll cut through your words. <laughs> <laughs> that was a veiled <laughs> reference to actually what I'm getting at here, yeah. which is, have any of you played a... Uh, Phoenix Wright? Yeah. No? Because it's exactly this. Like, obviously the aesthetic is way different, the like the way that it plays out as far as the, the plot lines go. Yeah. Is wholly different in every way. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, the investigations and the class trials are essentially, or at least the non-stop debate era of the class trials, yeah. is exactly what a Phoenix Wright game is. Oh, this fucking game fantastic. This feels like it took Phoenix Wright and then just expounded upon it, and we're just like, well, this part where normally you'd be looking at evidence, let's have you drive a cab. <laughs> because <laughs> that seems reasonable. <laughs> Uh, and then this part where you'd normally be looking at more evidence, mm-hmm. uh, let's have you solve like a match three game. Uh, it was, I don't know. I, I, I uh, 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 uh. The game kind of turns everything up to 11, mm-hmm. even when it's terribly annoying to do so. Because <laughs> um, there's sometimes like, you know, I'm, I'm me. I like really extreme variation uh, and crazy off the wall bullshit. Like Psyche Taxi, despite being a complete slog to actually play through ever, I thought conceptually that the fact that they included this, I just thought was hilarious. Yeah. Like I, I loved the idea that someone was like, "Oh, we'll just have you like drive a really slow taxi game to like express ideas and form thoughts." Uh, it doesn't want you to think it's slow though. The thing, is that, like <laughs> yeah. your speedometer goes at like two hundred kilometers an hour. Like <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty quick taxi. <laughs> I'd say it's a, it's a, it's at least a sane taxi. Right. If not beyond that. But there were lots of times <laughs> when the game's insanity did not was not like genuinely surprising and was instead just like I, I think one of the first notes that I actually had written down when I was playing through this was that this feels like a game uh made for by and starring all the people that you wanted to like distance yourself from in high school <laughs> <laughs> like the the actual characters that you interact with are over the top and one-dimensional to an extent that is, like, actively grading most of the time, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, like, I genuinely like the uh, the false twist main character. Uh, I, I thought her personality was good, and I thought she was, she was nice as an initial protagonist. And I, I didn't see anything wrong with, like, super investigative journalism boy, and I liked how they used, like, the initial interaction with him as a way to develop the main character beforehand. I thought that was legitimately a cool and good decision. But if I could, if I could erase the, like, swearing, constantly sexualized inventor character from the game, along with, like, five other characters. I would so do that. Of all of the characters that I would give, like, just a straight pass to, I feel like Miu is one of them. Yeah. Because it's so over the top. Like, it's over the top to a point... Like, and they even... They give her this character trait of, like, backing down easily. Yeah. But that doesn't even matter, because, like, at the most, anyone's... the, The most time that any individual's emotions last is like a frame yeah, yes and then it's <laughs> they switch back over to whatever their like default personality is right and i think Miu gets a pass because like there's nothing human about her <laughs> and <laughs> i feel like that's true of a lot of the characters yeah and so it ends up being i felt like the one dimensionality of the characters for the most part, actually added to my enjoyment of it because really? they all felt yeah. like parody. I kind of felt the same way, and I kind of chalked it up more to like the fact that like I'm a designer and I like the character designs of the characters a lot, and I can see the whole like the one dimensionality coming from like the the, the strong like archetype designs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know. It just 
<laughs> literally like <laughs> representing that by making everyone two dimensional even yeah. in the 3D world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it just that I don't know that kind of like clicked for me, and I just the I just liked the goofy over the topness of that they could like squeeze out of these uh, like one note <laughs> characters. Yeah, I don't know. I I liked it too. I just I kept being sold on like the concept of a lot of the characters, but just kept being like. I, I kept feeling like I was being shrieked at all the time. It's the same thing you talked about with, with like the one frame emotional shifts. It mm-hmm. makes sense, especially in the concept of, especially in the context of the larger narrative, why that they would make these people like so inhuman, since it's, it, this is all just like essentially like a reality TV show or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I like e- example of er, of early engagement that I had with this game, where the game kept like fighting back and forth for like my perception of it. Uh, Every time the bears were on screen, I kind of just wanted to die. I wanted to get away from the bears real bad. You're hurting us so much. Yeah. <laughs> I think the mono cubs were my favorite part oh of my the game. God. I, th- I think Monokuma, Kuma, Monokuma uh-huh. is like an actively delightful character. You really wanted more references to Yokai Watch in your like. But I don't know anything about Yokai Watch, including what it is. <laughs> so the thing you said just now made no sense to me. Fair. However, uh. It, like, his character as a... I, I want to talk about this more in depth later because I want to kind of examine this game as a horror game more than what it seems like it thinks it is. Fair, yeah. Uh, because I think Monokuma Kuma is an amazing, uh, like, antagonist. Like, as far as, like, video game villains go, there are games that are much better than this one whose antagonists are far, far worse. True. He has, like, a, a drive and a personality. I'll give you the Monocubs because I can totally see somebody hating it and I can see people loving it. <laughs> I happen to fall into the, the group that generally, like, liked them. Mm-hmm. Though I gotta say, they took a pretty bit... My, like, all of my favorite of the Monocubs died one after another. Aww. Like, as <laughs> as I established which one I liked the most, he was murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked that that went in a direction I didn't expect, though. Mm-hmm. The way that they were all killed. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we're touching on a whole bunch of stuff. We are. So I think that the... Uh, to, like, try and refocus, unless there's, like, a... A, a grander thrust somebody wants to present to this. Well, I never actually summarized and finished the parts of the game because I've been I kept g- bringing up points of, of things that were like a point of friction with me engaging with this. Right. But like there were things that drew me in all the time, other than just the aesthetic and the gameplay. Like when, well, God, what was it? Like ultimate child caregiver, ultimate magician, like yeah. shit like that. I I'll just eat for breakfast. Yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. I <laughs> love things like that. I was completely like all in with this game once they had like giant caveman bug searcher like like that stuff is great i just wished that they had like turned it back from like an 11 to a 9 oftentimes i this game was constantly like just going over the line so to speak of, mm-hmm. of like acceptable comedy and absurdism it kept getting to a point where if they when they were being mild about it i was like oh yeah i'm totally on board with this i love this so much but then like a bear would come on and make like a joke about fake news and i'd be like oh okay <laughs> well that was I, uh, andy walked in during one of the class trials that he had already finished we were like ping pong back and forth as to who was further ahead in the game and mm-hmm. like at any given time uh given our like differing schedules but um the <laughs> he walked in uh, during the second class trial, and I'm just sitting there going like, "What the fuck does this? What is this game doing? Like, <laughs> what is wrong with these people?" Because like I had just we I had literally just gotten to a line where a bear in a video game, mm-hmm. a cartoon green and white bear, said. <laughs> it's, it's from a, Japan. From Japan. <laughs> so, well, I'm assuming this happened in localization, but uh, said, you never know. It's the year of the Jets, baby. <laughs> Fuck the Patriots. And I just like <laughs> what? Like, why would you date it like in such an oddly specific way? <laughs> Like, it's only relevant during, the, like, a one-year period. The game came out in September. Like, <laughs> what? Ah! And then it proceeds to snowball into, like, a weird Trump allegory. <laughs> with the ultimate maid being, like, leader of the free world. And now I just don't know what to think anymore. Like, mm-hmm. at most of my brain has leaked out my left ear. Yeah. yeah. So I just... Uh, 
like (laughs) that kind of complete insanity was both like very off-putting and also like kind of endearing because like the game clearly doesn't fucking care oh yeah Yeah. i think it happens just infrequently enough that it always worked for me Mm -hmm. (laughs) this may be the most confident game i've ever played (laughs) probably true i mean that's one way of that's a really crazy way of phrasing this i don't think most people would look at what's happening on screen the like just cacophony of bullshit and be like yeah it's very confident people (laughs) but like i mean you see it's backed up by good voice acting, too. Yeah. yeah. Generally, really good voice actors. I, I kind of wish that, that they were given lines that were a little bit less repetitive sometimes, but that's like a universal complaint of the industry, that in the end, considering its market, well, I understand I mean, why they included that. Not but. even the industry, specifically visual novels. Like, yeah. they're so, they're, they, the script for this game had to have been like four inches thick. Like, <laughs> this was an encyclopedia that somebody typed out in video game form. Yeah. And it is, uh, yeah, like, there's so much content here. There's hidden conversations and things that people will show up. You could never expect to call someone up and be like, hey, what are you doing this month? Like, we're just straight through recording every single line. Like, it just couldn't happen. Uh, (laughs) To circle back around to something JJ said earlier, one of the things that really stood out to me early on in the game was the bait-and-switch main character. Yeah, so good. Brilliantly done, and just the the cherry on top is the name of the game it's called killing harmony Harmony. so you think it like it makes sense that the musician character is the main character and they're like fuck you (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna sprinkle in little hints that she's committing the murder right under your nose and you don't even know it (laughs) it was so good i'm right there with you like i think that the the fact that uh katie dies like immediately is the master stroke as far as this game goes. And I mean, they peak early, but it, it really is like the best part of the whole game. And I remember, because I was getting, like, as we are getting further along and before the first trial, I'm starting to think, like, this is, like, I was almost kind of holding a grudge against the game, because I was like, this is obviously Shuichi's game. Because... It's he's the only person here who has a relevant skill. Like uh, it's you have a, like a, a cute girl fawning all over you. Like this is just a typical setup. Yeah. And the dude, it's just weird that it's not from his perspective. Right. And then it suddenly was, <laughs> and I was like, all right. Like <laughs> at least I was correct. <laughs> yeah. Just not in a way I would have ever guessed. Yep. Yeah, it was just really cool that there were those little like seeds that were planted in there, like you pointed out when I was playing it, like that she mentions a line about Rube Goldberg machines mm-hmm. while you're talking to her, then proceeds to set one up for her murder. Oh god. She uh and then when you leave the classroom, like, to go find the dead body. Uh, when you're doing your stakeout, she's like, there's the line where she's like, I dropped everything I had and left. Like, mm-hmm. cause she throws the shot put ball down the vent and it's like all those little clues. So, so good. good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. only, the only one that I actually caught really, and no one started piecing together later when it was very early uh, in the whole thing. Cause it was specifically phrased like, Oh, I, when she's in the warehouse getting the uh, equipment for the cameras, and it's like, I put everything in my hands in the bag because right. I knew that I put up that I picked up the shot put ball, and I was like, wait, so she just has that ball now? And that was the only thing I remember. And ended up actually like suspecting that there might be weirdness happening when the, the death, the first death, ended up being because he was murdered with a shot put ball. Mm-hmm. But I like kind of dismissed it because the, the game provided you a whole lot of other alternative explanations for how it could have been someone else's ball. You know, yeah. it set it up real good. Yeah, and it made me feel like it's. The moment in the game that made me feel the most like a detective, because it was narrowed down to what, uh, the only people who knew about the cameras Cameras. were Miyu, Suichi, and Kaede, and Mm -hmm. I was like, had that, I don't know if it's a Sherlock Holmes quote or a general detective quote, where it's like, (laughs) if you eliminate all the impossible, (laughs) like, whatever's left, no matter how improbable must be the answer, like, I was like, I used that exact train of logic. (laughs) To be like, it has to be Kaede, even though I didn't think it was possible. Exactly. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, but like the whole first trial, just to, speaking narratively, not to get into the mechanics yet, mm-hmm. um, like, realistically, like from the beginning, like before the trial, I was like, ah, Gonta did it. And then <laughs> the, the trial proceeds to lead you into the, like, along in the thought process of what seems like it would be the most obvious choice, which is Gonta. Mm-hmm. And then it just, like, 
knocks the things down, and it had me, like, literally just beat for beat, like, catching each thought that I would have had and reversing it on me. And, like, was the was the case itself particularly deep? Not really but god damn if it wasn't like a successfully intriguing mystery yep which yeah. i didn't expect from yeah, this game. i felt like it hit that like just the right like sweet spot where it was i was able to figure most things out like without too much trouble but like it was like just enough that i was like oh, like i had no idea <laughs> as it was happening you know like it was actually like i was unraveling a real mystery mm-hmm. <laughs> this game still has a lot of fat to trim off of it. Much like how 999 had a lot of fat to trim off of it. And I understand how specifically in a game like this, where the setup of, like, the mysteries that you're solving and the detective work that you have to do kind of requires a certain amount of fat, just so you can have a possibility space wide enough for a lot of red herrings and a lot of potential different setups to a lot of hypothetical killers every time you enter the trial. Mm -hmm. But, like... If you, if you, for example, if you look back at the first trial and you go through it beat by beat, most of the things that you did beforehand weren't actually relevant to those kind of deliberations. I kind of wish that this game had, in a lot of different ways, kind of bought more into the whole brevity is the soul of wit thing. <laughs> I wanted everything to be tighter not because anything that was present now was actively bad, but because I wanted to get back to that mystery solving phase as fast as possible every time I sat down to play it. And because I never super connected with a lot of the characters in terms of their like actual moment to moment dialogue, it, I, I didn't treat like conversations with like mean astronaut kid to be like a reward. So, but so I kept looking like, I, kept, I felt like I was engaging with the characters often, not like a visual novel where I'm like individually invested in all these people and their relationships with another. I was like meta invested in like, I've got to keep my eyes open at all times <laughs> for any potential clues. I've right. got to, you know, see if anyone's doing anything suspicious. Uh, it, it felt like it, maybe that was partially the intent here because it doesn't make you feel more like, the television observer Mm -hmm. like tons of of my early observations were like why does this game have like an intro like it's a television show why does it have even the commercial uh, breaks the achievement for finishing the like first the the prologue yeah is called like the like killer cold open or something like it legitimately refers to it as a cold open yeah like they use lots of television related tropes like the obvious like monitor in everything, mm-hmm. plus the the Monokuma theater, theater yeah. where they have like just movie posters with him in them, which were one hundred percent exquisite, by the <laughs> way, uh, pretty much the greatest. I kept thinking, yeah, because like at the time early on, because the game kept, I was fighting for my attention. I wasn't giving it enough credit. The early, like when I first started playing the game, and I kept thinking like, oh, they're just trying to ape the popularity of various anime things and they care and, and put too much stock in how much people enjoy the weird bear cubs but like nope in the end that ended up having like an actual thematic purpose and ended up being really good toward that end i just yeah it, it was hard for me to buy in but like oh my god I, I i cannot call this game anything but good like its goals are weird uh like it, it really it, pains you to say all oh this. yeah it, it really <laughs> does because it's kind of like it reminds me a lot of, of what it would feel like uh, as like a crotchety person going to like a modern art show where you're looking at what going goes what's going on in front of you and you're like oh, i don't understand this this is strange and not appealing to me <laughs> but technically speaking every individual element like really did you know cohere into a, a solid whole well <laughs> I think what began this entire thing is you saying the game had fat to trim. Yeah. And I feel like, I, I, I almost feel like that's not true. I, I mean, yeah. I say I would agree, but I think I, I would, con- like, I feel like I think that different parts need to be trimmed than you. Because I genuinely liked the dating sim part. Um, I think everything, like, and it was like a necessary, like, cool down from the mysteries and the trials and everything. And like you said, you need the possibility space for new shit to happen. Right. Um, I think there was... But there was a lot of extra shit that could have been cut. Like, whenever you have to start, like, training with Kaito. Right. And, like, things like that, that where you would, like... I feel like it should have been just the free time run around and, like... 
in between the yeah grow story. your relationship mm-hmm. with the other characters and not have any of the other like scripted bits or at least not as many because you need some but. yeah the the problem and the reason why I argue that there isn't really fat to trim it's more like they needed to uh, just like lobotomize entire sections <laughs> of the game I mean for me I'm sure some people fucking love that this game is like a 40 hour oh, experience yeah. oh yeah that I is like largely audience. linear and narrative yeah I think the core audience loves that for I would sure guess, anyway yeah. but uh, the the game is just juggling too many things at once in order to for it to be a like svelte game like it just can't do it it's like it has uh like horror elements it has a dating sim it has a visual novel it has mysteries it has like five plot twists like major plot twists that change your perception on the entire experience uh the, the thing is just literally dripping with all of these different uh like genres and tropes that it has to try and fit in And to make any one of them shorter detracts from the rest of them as well because they're all interconnected. Which is not to say, like, similarly to how you feel, I don't think that this is a great game uh, overall. It's it's definitely not one of the great games of uh, of (laughs) Of the Noclip podcast. podcast. Yeah, But, uh, like, it is good, and I think that its goodness can, like, hinges entirely on all of the parts la- like latching to each other and actually pulling themselves along. I can see that. I can see that. It's the thing that I was by far the most surprised about were the horror elements. Like that it was one of those like many elements in this game, it put me off really really hard and made me like dread picking it back up again either out of a sense of annoyance or just like fatigue or uh but like i had to admit that in most of the times in which i felt that way it was because the game was like actively accomplishing its goals to some extent like the death sequences are so horrifying they're so just completely unspeakable and I like because part of my early complaints was like, that I can't take these stupid bears seriously as an antagonist, and they don't seem to take themselves seriously as an antagonist, and they constantly talk like Mickey Mouse, uh, like not even in like a horrifying way, like that what was the game that came out Benny recently. Benny the Egg Machine. Yeah, yeah, not even like in in, in like a, a horror scene where they're they're trying to specifically play off the Mickey Mouse comparisons. Like it, it's just looks like an anime protagonist cartoon character who also murders people because that's really common in mangas. But, uh, like, I... But I have to give them credit, right? Like, it was it was terrifying. Like, they, they managed to make those sequences... They managed to actually make me take these their situations seriously by just being so over-the-top and grotesque. Not in a bloody way, but in, like, a dark way mm. that... Like, I had to recognize that my desire to, like, I don't want to go back to this is like, was was a success on their part. Yeah, I think the first one hits especially hard since it's your main character up to that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and just watching her get, like, hung. And she's the one who, like, is the most, uh, like, among the other members of the cast is the most sympathetic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, whether or not you actually connect with her or not is... You know, I mean, it's going to be personal preference. They obviously want you to, but uh, even if you don't, like, you realize the effect that her death actually has on the rest of the characters, one-dimensional as they are, Mm -hmm. that, like, you still understand the connection that they have. Um, And, I mean, I don't, I kind of don't want to bring up Battle Royale because I did last week, but... (laughs) It's fair. It's for a really (laughs) different reason this time, Uh, because what the reason this makes me think about it, other than, obviously, the fact that it originated in like Japan and is one of these games with a bunch of rules that whole thing one of the things that makes Battle Royale effective and in turn makes this game effective is that horror writers know that if your goal is horror without any other context like you don't want it to be uh, you know, like subtly darkly humorous you don't want it to be something else or if you want it like it's used in this game to be just a sharp tonal turn the death of young people is particularly effective like in a way that makes you your skin crawl because like see, like it's just uniquely weird 
<laughs> to see. Like, it, it's not... Because you don't expect it. And it, I think that this game levies that in these scenes in order to make you sort of, like, be taken aback by it. Mm-hmm. Like, to really push the taboo. And there's this kind of, like, denial amongst all the characters until, like, the deaths actually happen. Like, they don't talk about the fact that they're in a killing game nearly as much as people would in real life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, you almost kind of forget about it until, like, the end of the trial. You're like, oh, yeah, one of these people has to die. Die now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have to, like, push a button with their face on it <laughs> to make it happen. Right. I think the only one who really... Uh like, comes off like they deserve it, at least, like, through the parts that I played, is, uh, Keo. And it's, that's even up in the air, because, like, he's obviously mentally ill, but he also has killed a lot of people, so, like, uh, <laughs> don't know where, where you should really go. Uh, like, that, it took a lot of the punch, honestly, out of the third trial for me, because, like, what like what are you gonna do? Like it's he's a he's a crazy guy. He's <laughs> and I did his uh like his I romanced Keo, so to speak. Uh Keo and, and Miyu, because apparently I'm into the weird shit. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and because Miyu is voiced by no clip approved. <laughs> God uh, damn it, I knew you were gonna star. bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> that made it all the worse for me. Oh yeah, the the yeah, star of no clip approved anime <laughs> melancholy of Hari he sees a Mia. Uh <laughs> but so I knew going in that he had uh, dissociative identity disorder. Like, it was... Or he might actually be possessed if this is a video game. Uh, <laughs> one of the two, for sure. I yep. think it's more effective if he's just crazy. Um, but yeah, it's just like, when you go through it, like that was the one that had the least impact on me. I was... Uh... <laughs> In terms of the romance, uh, I really tried hard to play to my outs here because I didn't know, especially going in, how much the like free time segments. I, I kind of assumed, like Andy did, that they were eventually going to free up the rails a little bit more than they ever did and let the free time be more determinative of your actual experience and the right. kind of people. I thought there was a chance that like who you spend time with might even change the outcome of trials. And then for obvious reasons, for the probably writing reasons, they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I kind of like wanted to cover my bases. So playing to my outs here, considering the like giant mech capture circumstances, my, my <laughs> intricate <damn> it. <laughs> my intricate strategy here um, was to befriend what I thought were the only people who could like realistically have any chance of overcoming. It's very small. Okay. So obviously my friends were uh, the the magician because if there's okay. any chance he's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's that's huge, right? Like if the one time she stops being lazy, right? It's just like oh, I actually can perform magic. Yeah, she's just like dimension door, yeah. and then we can just all leave. <laughs> like, I wanted to keep that open, so she was number one. Yeah. Um, number two was a crazy blood Hawaiian ritualist lady, Angie. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if you know, if her god is real, you know. I would love an all-powerful divine being to be able to intervene in these circumstances. True. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that ended up being that's you, a creepy. That turn. was actually not the way that I was expecting this to go because uh-huh. if I were like, because if I were to put myself in that situation mm-hmm. and say which of these people do I think is going to be the most help, the person who thinks that she's a mage and the person who's like <laughs> de- like devout to an island god would be the like last people on my list. <laughs> no, that's <the> thing. <laughs> this is obviously in the context of a video game where yeah. they could t- where a t- you could totally just come down and scoop people up and leave, and I just have to accept it. <laughs> that's the point, man. Yes, that's why it's playing to your outs because the like point oh one percent chance uh-huh. of that being correct is better than the zeros across everyone else's board. Gunta picked up a fucking manhole cover with two fingers. <laughs> you don't think you can put a hole in one of those fucking mechs? <laughs> Fuck Gunta, twenty eighteen. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. I don't know his limits. I don't. He he did he did one nice thing. It is weird to me. This seems like kind of a plot hole. It's like early on they try to kill Monokuma, mm-hmm. and then they realize that they can't, mm-hmm. so they stop trying. Sure. But then after Monodam kills Mono Kid. And he stays dead. Why didn't they then just try to kill all the, the mono the cubs, cubs so that the exisels or whatever they're called, the robots, mm-hmm. are out of the picture? Well, because they they're the only ones who can pilot. Them. Right, but they don't know that until chapter three. Oh, well, okay. Which is the dur- dorkiest thing I've ever said. 
<laughs> well, but anyway. The, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and the third one was obviously the robot child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kibo. Kibo, I assumed, was going to be where you went with that. You're like, well, with the mechs. Yeah. Maybe Kibo could, like, interface with them like Hacking. an astromech droid. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could, like, you know, pull a, a, a nice, uh, crap, what was that game that we also played with, like, the sexy skirts and the robot future? Sexy skirts, robot future. <laughs> sexy, Near Atama. That's Sexy it. skirts in the robot future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish that this was the Near Atomata podcast right now because I would change the title to Sexy, <laughs> yeah, sexy Skirts Robot That's future. the name of JJ's new concept album. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping he would like spread his consciousness among yeah, the people. I was like a hundred percent sure that Kibo was just going to end up being a person dressed as a robot. <laughs> Me too. Like <laughs> I was one thousand percent sure that he actually started being a robot. Yeah, which is surprisingly late into the game. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. I kind of want to uh, rewind the tape a bit mm-hmm. and uh, head back toward what we were saying before about this game having like a million faces yeah uh and one of those faces being monokuma being just like a terrifying antagonist uh i feel like despite the fact that the whole intro part of the game was probably my favorite part of it i felt like there was a missed opportunity that obviously continued throughout the game and i didn't know it was going to happen at the time Mm -hmm. where after the trial they kind of let everybody just sort of vent for a minute and by a minute, I mean ten minutes, because we're playing Dang and Ronpa here. Um, so everybody stands around, they talk about shit, and Kaede explains everything. And she's like, look, I did it all for you. I wanted to kill the mastermind. It was all, it was all a mistake. I feel like in the middle of that, before she was able to say anything and anyone was able to get closure, so she should have just been ripped apart. Like, now I know they have, like, these crazy cutscenes for all the executions and that it's, like, supposed to be, like, a big dramatic flair. Yeah. But, like, if she had been cut off before anyone could get, like, closure out of her in, like, the most brutal and horrible way imaginable, mm-hmm. it would have been literally the greatest, like, <laughs> <laughs> terrifying moment in games of 2017. Like, people would fucking talk about that. Yeah. They'd be like, remember that time when I was playing that game, and you're playing as the main character, and then it turns out that the main character is actually the villain of the first act, and then, in the middle of her speech about how she's not all that bad, a robot just tears her in half and her skeleton falls out on the floor? <laughs> uh, that was fucked up, right? <laughs> Dude, they, get a, they had a good enough job establishing the fuck uppery through those dramatic scenes that I'm willing to, I, w- I would have preferred that the like giant me- mecha noose would have mm. you know, they could have just cut her off that way just like lifted yeah. her into the sky and, and then the rest of her body stays up in the, <laughs> and the skeleton is still there <laughs> it just rips it everything else out. away well, with uh, Midway, if you're listening to this, we've got some new fatalities for the next Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, I agree it would have been a better impact, but I, as I've already, I think, partially expressed here, I was never afraid of the bears. The bears, even given the scenes, never were never an object of terror or horror for me. The circumstances that they were in were horrifying, and the manner of their end was horrifying. Right. But no, I even but, given the scenes, I was never scared of Monokuma, and I still, t- to this moment, don't think that, like, Monokuma made the game better, which you can, oh, I'm sure, I beat think, it in my face about. <laughs> I think Monokuma himself is. There's something, like... Like, there's that, like, trickster kind of trope. Like, he really feels like he doesn't... I was like, you could make the Cheshire Cat, like, an evil demon. You <laughs> yeah. know, like, he's, there's something about him, like, he just doesn't care about anything, and it feels really genuine, and mm-hmm. he just, like, murders for fun, and there's something kind of scary about that. Yeah, it's that he's unfeeling. That's, like, that's why he's a good character, because he looks upon the worst imaginable thing to mortals and laughs. Poo hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> but yeah, I think the mono cubs themselves are just supposed to be comic relief. Yeah. Or at the very least, like, they're supposed to. I mean, in the Mono Dan's like, whole thing was a little bit kind of scary, almost <laughs> that he just doesn't say anything and then just starts murdering all of his uh, siblings. Yeah, killer robots not always like the most uh, welcoming thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, that's really if you didn't think Monokuma was scary, fine. It's, it's, uh, be- it's because he would 
he, it's because he was such he was so much into the trickster archetype that he failed to ever be grounded as like a living being like well, like he's I, a robot no i, I get that <laughs> by living being i don't mean like with made of flesh this is a game in which like a robot is one of the principal characters mm -hmm. like i mean he will come in and tell like jokes about just like topical references. Like he doesn't right. feel like someone who's there and he doesn't feel like an observer either. He's not, he's like neither narrator nor principal actor or character. Like, well, they, he's they supposed try. to be like a game show host yeah. because he is a game show his host. His character is the, uh, what would it even be? Like the emperor, like a Roman emperor. <laughs> Uh, like attending to the Colosseum, like he needs to be entertaining for his people while he, like unflinchingly sentences people to their death, like in the most horrible way imaginable. I don't know many Roman emperors that come in and like make ultra instinct jokes. I mean, this is true, but I mean, Roman emperors also were not. I'm sure they got up there and made some jokes about like Rome. Do you think that's a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you it happened at least once. <laughs> you know, jokes about the classic jokes about Rome. Yeah, yeah. I said it's getting a little hot in here. Anybody seen Nero? <laughs> Man, those blues, right, guys? <laughs> this is a uh... after that lost rock place. They must be really feeling yeah. the blues. When this in is... Rome, when... make jokes about, about Rome. Rome. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, it's a modern thing, <laughs> and it's on like it's it's like poppy pop culture. Mm -hmm. So obviously he's going to make like some topical references. Obviously he's going to be in a t Texas Chainsaw Massacre commercial <laughs> in the middle of the video game. I mean that's pretty good. It was it, it was awesome. Though. I have it saved on my phone. Hold on. I liked the one where he, he was both Doc and Marty. <laughs> oh yeah. I liked uh, the Jaws one a lot as well. Yeah, I, I thought that was great. <laughs> I had to take a picture of it. God. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll chalk this all up to personal anime fatigue. I, but at the very least, don't come away from this thinking that I think it's bad, because I admit that it is not bad. I just found it grating. Uh, also, I love that it's well implemented. I like that this is the thesis that could potentially just be accurate. Is that you have just seen more anime, and like this is all novel to me. Like I'm just like, whoa, how strong that guy is. What are they school kids? This is crazy. <laughs> One thing I thought that was hilarious is the first time Chad saw Ganta, he was like, it's just Goku with, like, Tarzan hair. <laughs> and I was like, no, he's, he's too bulky to be Goku. And then his name comes up on screen. And then <laughs> later, when he gets, like, enraged, he basically just goes super sad. Right? It's like, oh, okay, Chad, you got it. You're right. <laughs> it's like, his name is Ganta. Goku Haru is a big but Your argument was that he was too buff. To yeah, like Goku's not that bulky. I don't think his strength <laughs> comes from his martial arts techniques. His, his strength comes from within Chad. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, Chad. I assumed his strength came from when he ate that cloud like it was food. What? In the first season of Dragon Ball Z. He eats the Nimbus cloud? He, no, he just eats a cloud. Oh. Like, he's what are you like, oh. talking about? Story time. Is this after he dies? He dies. But when he, he's he, on Snake Way, yes. he eats a cloud? I don't remember that. He just goes, like, oh, I'm really hungry. And then he goes, oh, oh, and just, like, <laughs> chops down the cloud. Yeah, that like, sounds like something that would happen in Dragon Ball Z. It does, yeah. yeah. That was about the time that I stopped my rewatch of Dragon Ball Z. I was like, I think we're done here. I think uh, you need to get to the cloud. Parts. Like, when he but, went to when he when he participated in a killing game. Yeah, that's the good part. What about danging Grandpa? <laughs> Are you danging my Grandpa right now? Are you, man, would you just stop danging all of our Grandpas <laughs> and get to the point? <laughs> Did we ever figure out what the title means? I do. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's like. Act, this is actually a TV show in the world of the game. I know that. I mean, and like, literally. The, the TV station is called Danganronpa. But, like, uh, what is that? I Dan don't know. Danganronpa. That <laughs> on the internet. No. I, I know what he's asking. <laughs> oh, just Dan the word? Means? Yeah. Yes. Danganronpa okay, literally translates to bullet refute, which is a very literal 
like description of the mechanical uh, essence of the game. That you have truth bullets and you use them to refute people's points. Bullet refute, hence Dang and Ranpa. Uh, it is also just really fun to say. So I'm imagining that played some part into why it was not like renamed to something else. Mm-hmm. I guess the original titles were called like Trigger Hat or. Yeah, trigger yeah, happy you havoc. With guns, yeah. yeah, and uh, there was like a first person shooter spinoff that had like a whole other name. Uh, they give them these subtitles because I think Dangan Ranpa is probably just a bit much for the traditional consumer. Mm-hmm. I knew it was for me when you first said it. I was like, can you say all that again, but like one letter at a time and also teach me Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very peanut butter on the roof of your mouth kind of yeah. title. It's one of those things where I, I just referred to it as like Teddy Bear Murder Party until mm-hmm. I internalized the name. Yeah. Dang and <laughs> God damn, did we internalize the name. Yeah. We said Dang or Ann or Ronpa <laughs> at least like 50 times a day for the past three weeks. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, speaking of bullet refutes, mm-hmm. uh, the... <laughs> I have to savor this. The only thing I'm ever going to say in my life. Yeah. Speaking of bullet refutes, we need to talk about like the part of this game that I think we all agree was great. Uh, but now that we've led up to it with all this stuff, we should definitely cool down, take a little break, have a, an intermission in our class trial. Agreed. Agreed. All right. All right. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Chad, the ultimate podcast host. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing we, we wanted to talk about a little bit, um, getting into more of the mechanical aspect of things, uh, but bridging it from our previous discussion, uh, as you complete uh, the like romance subplots or just like the, the friendship subplots, whatever you want to call them, uh, you get two things. Uh, one of which is a skill, uh, which is, you know, it, I'm curious as to what some of the other ones were, since I only got two, um, <laughs> but that, uh, like, does a certain thing in, uh, the trials. Like, it's a, just an additional ability. Yeah. And then the other thing is a pair of underwear. <laughs> and, I, I like, the first plot that I finished was Mew's, and... She, in fact, used a gun specifically for removing underwear in order to transport the underwear into my inventory. Okay. And so I was like, okay, that's done. (laughs) And then I completed Kia's subquest, and I also got his underwear. (laughs) (laughs) And at that point, I was like, is this just everybody? Because that's very strange. Yeah, I, I had the exact same experience. Mm-hmm. I finished Miu's first, and then I finished Maki's second, right. and I got her underwear. I was like, this is was completely unprompted, too. <laughs> she didn't even mention it. I just had her underwear in my inventory. Yeah. I like to imagine we just, like, stopped talking. <laughs> then she just, like, took her underwear off and handed it to me and walked around. <laughs> walked off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> what yeah, do you that get? That was so weird. What do you get from Kibo? Uh, weirdly, j- not Kibo, Kyo. Whatever. Uh, Kurokia, the uh, ultimate anthropologist. No, 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 no. That, I mean, hypothetically, oh. if you romance the robot, do you get robot underwear? What, what does it even mean? Probably. The, yeah, this is because I'm assuming that it's just a, with the the possible only exception of me. Mm-hmm. I assume it's just a representative. Because, like, <laughs> traditionally in video games, you do a stupid binary romance thing with Indeed. someone, and then at the end, you have sex with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but instead, in this game, they just give you <laughs> underwear. Yeah. They leave For it, some reason. They leave it up to implication, yeah. Right. And, th- and because I knew that, uh, that Keo had... Uh, like, uh, it was potentially possessed by his dead sister, uh, the fact that I got, like, what were essential, well, they're described as bikini bottoms in their description, which makes me go, like, okay, does anyone just hand you, like, a pair of, like, red spotted boxers or something? 
like, I don't know. I feel like Gonto wouldn't wear underwear. I wonder if he wears underwear. I think a gentleman would wear underwear. Oh, a gentleman would wear underwear. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> I cannot find an image of Kido's underwear. All right, how, I love how we come back and we're like, we're going to focus on the mechanics of this game. <laughs> underwear collection. That's that's very important. But yeah. It does seem representative, though, because this is a game where, like, you know, you can go through your little list of all the stats and, you know, likes and dislikes of the character, and every character, male or female, right. has, like, chest size measurements. Like, yeah. that's <laughs> something anyone needs to know or information that's relevant in any way to anyone. Well, if you could, it's it's to see if they could fit through the vent in the cla- in classroom, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Obviously. No, uh... <laughs> that, honestly, if I were to levy a criticism against this game, which I have already and will probably continue to do so as they come up, uh, one of the ones that is forefront in my mind uh, comes in the form of a quote from my friend Joe, who I told I was playing this game, <laughs> and his response was, Oh yeah? I heard the third one is super horny. <laughs> uh, y- yes, indeed it is. <laughs> Oh, that's a way to describe it. I mean, that's, that's good news, though, because it means the others are comparatively less horny, which that's, is I mean, exactly what I'm looking let's forward to. Let's be real. They're probably <laughs> Not, pretty horny, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, in absolute terms, mm-hmm. sure. Well, no, I got a gun out of a thing, uh, out of a, a slot machine, and that gun had the description of, uh, it's like a model gun, but if held in, in the proper hands, can reveal a man's fantasy. And I was like, that's weird. And then it said, <laughs> something special might happen if you hold on to it. And I was like, that's also weird. <laughs> and then I proceeded to play through the game. And then the balding Monokuma showed up. And I went, hey, what's up? And he was like, deadpan. And I was like, maybe he has a thing. Maybe he's trying to say something to me. Wait, I have that gun. And I went, me Chad, not me Shuichi, mm-hmm. went... That gun? Like, how is this going to come up? And he proceeded to tell me about a party happening in the pool, and I was then treated to a scene of four of the female characters, uh, like, uh, talking about each other's breasts in the in the changing room. Mm-hmm. And then Chuichi was like, the morality of this situation has suddenly dawned on me, and then walks away. And I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to pull here, Danganronpa. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you going to play off this as something that Shuichi has done? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's just strange. How are you going to introduce this scene and then end it on, like, a morally critical tone <laughs> when you produced the scene? See, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, classic, having your cake and eating it, too. Classic. Yeah. Uh, but their cake was in the form of uh, breasts, yeah, mostly yeah. as is as is tradition. Yeah, yeah. As is tra- <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's get to them. Their trials. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we said this game was long. Yeah, one of the most staggeringly long aspects of this game are the class trials, mm-hmm. and I almost like kind of shuddered when you were like. There's so little of the <laughs> gameplay that I wanted in the game, in this game. And I went, so little, like, my, d- my dear God, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> every time I started a class trial, I checked the time of the save, mm-hmm. and I, I compared it to the time of the save when I finished the class trial. And not a single one of them took me less than two hours. Fair, fair. Like, pushing on three in some cases. This is a single instance of gameplay, <laughs> uh, uninterrupted. Because if you interrupt it, you just, like, fuck up. Because you'll just forget, mm-hmm. like, what the, the case was about. That is the length of a Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> like, this is an incredibly long... <laughs> okay, maybe a better way to phrase that is I wish... And with twice as much information. <laughs> it. This is an exercise of mental fortitude heretofore <laughs> not seen on the NoClip podcast. <laughs> I would have preferred it because the game right now is like four hour chunk of not trial, four hour chunk of trial. <laughs> right. I would have preferred the, the, for the switches to back and forth. That would get back to the trial sooner and have less from that that four hour gap of non trial. But yes, 
I, I was just voraciously consuming trial. Like I, <laughs> I had, a very litigious <laughs> thing for you to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't even like <laughs> I wasn't even processing how long each one took. I just I wanted more constantly. <laughs> Yeah, um, like I played for like twelve hours yesterday because I wanted to get as much played as possible, and that was only two days and two trials. Yeah. Like that took me twelve hours. And when you finished <laughs> the second trial, all those balloons fell, and those Japanese executives flew in, and we were like, "Congratulations, you're the first person to ever do two trials <laughs> in one day." <laughs> it was rough. Yeah, I can I was, imagine. I was very tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what, when Japanese executives come to your house to give you a reward and it's like oh, I am very tired. <laughs> no, they understood. They were like You've done more than we can ask of any man. <laughs> Their gift to him was a golden pillow that he was the person who sleeps upon yeah. it in yeah. fair dreams. Well, one of the gifts I think was like the pillow of admiration and that's what they gave me. Yeah. And then gave them my underwear. <laughs> Bring it all around, full yeah, circle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the video game in this video game. <laughs> right, yeah. That old video game part. Yeah. You know what it is? It's, it's good. Yeah, it's real fucking good. Oh my god. Uh, I like, okay, so they really brought out their, like, big guns as far as, like, writing goes mm -hmm. when, it get, when it came to the class trials because... Everything everyone said was so fucking believable compared to what they would normally say. <laughs> right, right. Which is unbelievable and often stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, it, like, the... I mean, first of all, the fact that nobody ever just killed Shuichi and then knew that they would get away with the murder because no one would <laughs> yeah. have ever solved it. I was expecting, like, there to be an attempt to kill Suichi. Shuichi eventually. <laughs> oh, for sure. But it doesn't happen. That's you're you have two, basically you have two ways out of the the killing game if you're a thinking man. You a kill Shuichi and then just get off immediately, or <laughs> you hole up in a room somewhere and then you go on a murder rampage and kill everyone, <laughs> and then you leave because you're the only one left. So, the fact that Shuichi managed to survive till the end is, is nothing short of miraculous. Yeah. Frankly, in, in a lot of ways, it seems almost kind of unfair that they put, like, Ganta in the trial at all. Because, like, imagine if, like, he finally broke under the stress, right? Like, that's not even a game anymore. <laughs> no, yeah. He, yeah, <laughs> just, he just wins. <laughs> murders everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of possible routes there. But when I was first going through all of the tutorials uh, and tutorial dialogue writer person who personified the tutorials. This is another thing that happens often in Japanese games. I don't know why. Uh, the other, my <laughs> he other... keeps apologizing at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. He even signs one. He's even yeah. like, he even like says his little like tutorial <laughs> person name. <laughs> very good, very fantastic way to make tutorials enjoyable uh, by making them genuinely funny. Uh, but there were... The actual meat, going through and feeling like you're rewarded for getting the irrelevant text off the screen is great. I loved the, like, try-split nonstop debates where you have to, like, constantly listen in to, what like, what's actually relevant. Because it's, it's maybe my favorite of all the different kinds of games that uh, come into play during the trials because it's so, like, mentally taxing to have to take in all the different information. I kind of expected more uh, of the trials to actually be like that, where there'd be, like, constant, like, debate and people talking over each other. The way that you described the game initially... Mm -hmm. when you like brought it up as a potential game for the podcast is that's basically what I was imagining was what is the mass panic yeah. debates like, yeah, that would be so game. mentally exhausting <laughs> it was just like an hour and a half of <laughs> listening to people like shout over each other well yeah. keep in mind at that point I didn't know that the trials were going to be well the, that's fair they <laughs> were yeah. going to be the marathon affairs at the time but uh, yeah listening to people shout over each other was good it also explains why so many of the interspersals are less mentally taxing and more just like pleasant taxi rooms rides going through the <laughs> desert uh, uh, one thing i thought was weird was the whole lie bullet thing oh yeah i feel like that was really like difficult for me to pick up on when it was good to use and also felt like it wasn't used enough or 
I don't know. That felt like a weird inclusion to me that they didn't like flesh out at all. The the perjuries I thought were an interesting inclusion as well. I think that there are only a couple of places where they're required to be used. Right. I assume it's a, approximately one per trial. I, I think it is one per trial. Mm-hmm. But because they offer additional paths, like you can lie about other things in order to move the, the, the trial in a different way. I feel like you have to have like a really good understanding of what's going on mm-hmm. uh, f- in order to use those properly, because I certainly, I don't I did never successfully did one. Yeah. Um, but it, it's interesting and it's cool for people who are going to play this 40 hour game multiple times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I liked it generally. I wish they would have explained that your health drains the whole time that you're holding it. Because man, oh man, did I like actually almost lose once. <laughs> uh, that is one thing. Well, I think the mass panic debates were probably the most difficult part of the game, mm-hmm. uh, mechanically speaking. The game itself is not at least through the three trials that I played, so admittedly, there's a lot of room for it to go up. Yeah. Uh, after the first trial, I upped the difficulty to mean, and still didn't die. I did lose a thing once, like a mini game one time, uh, after increasing the difficulty, but it all it did was deal damage. I don't know what happens when you run out of status. Yeah, I, I died, or I, like, I lost on the first one because I wasn't paying attention to my health at all and I was experimenting with everything. Right. But you can just retry whatever you fail on. Yeah, for... Okay. Or, or it, it gives you the option to just vote right then and there if you want, but I, of course, did not pick that. I, I was like, man, I really hope this doesn't make me retry the whole trial. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I hit retry and it was... Luckily, not the case. Good, good. <laughs> but uh, after that, I didn't die at all. So yeah. I think the health system works for what it was intended, which is to provide tension to wrong answers and a pretty significant tension too. Like uh, I was paying attention to like the skill upgrades before. Then I was actually worried and curious, like whether you guys really, like what kind of decisions that you made early on about what things to upgrade on the initial upgrade trees, because they set up, like, the two generic, like, you get more health, you get more focus yeah. right in front, which I assume were immediate and always good, but because they give you the stats to upgrade them before a trial ever happens, everything else was just, like, complete incomprehensible nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even... I, I only took things... In the beginning, I only took things that said, like, these are useful in all parts of the trial, mm-hmm. which a lot of them translated to, these are never useful. <laughs> And so, like, it, like after the first trial, I was like, okay, so this stuff doesn't make any sense. The upgrade you get from Miu is called uh, the Triple X-Ray Goggles, and they only help you in the, like, Tetris Attacks game, and it, they help you in the dumbest way imaginable. It's just if you uncover part of a, an object, it shows you the whole object. And so the first time I used them, I didn't know, even know they were happening, <laughs> because it was like... Uh, I was just breaking. I tried to clear the whole thing before I realized what I was even going for. I see. Yeah, uh, Kia's was more useful, especially for me, uh, who played most of this game with the controller on the ground uh, and <laughs> auto mode turned on, uh, which was uh, or yeah, Kia, that's the right name. Uh, <laughs> which is whenever you focus, your cursor just automatically goes to the like words. Ooh. So I no longer had to aim. Uh, I just issued the idea of V counters and V agrees and uh, just like hel- just held the button and pressed triangle and it just always hit it. I'm yeah, so Maki's uh, ability just lets you see the V counter spots without focusing or right. whatever. Oh. Uh, I, as a dumb person, I'm still unclear on what the comparable benefit of a, as a V counter over just like a normal It gives counter? you more points, which gives you more money co- coins at the end. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is there anything that you do with the money other than just spending it on the, like the, the Chotsky machine or whatever? I think it, I think it's just for the dating some part of the game. Okay. It is. Yeah. Uh, you, you can use the. Um, well, uh, it's most. It is. It's entirely for the dating sim part, but there are other like parts of it besides just presents. But there isn't much uh, because in addition to the things you get out of the the gashapon, you can also uh, 
go to the casino and spend coins there to get coins for games at the casino, which you then exchange for other prizes, one of which is, like, a key to that, like, sex motel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every night, if you have a key, you'll be ushered to the sex motel to see some kind of, I'm sure, steamy, sexy scene. I never played any of it, I'm just aware that it exists. Of course okay. it exists. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I don't know Great. what the actual purpose of it is. I mean, I assume there was going to be something tasteless when the sex motel showed up the first time. What do you so mean? I'm not shocked that this happened. Like, before that point, you thought the game was just, like, the epitome of, like, restraint and taste? <laughs> of course Are you kidding not. me? But what I assumed was that there wasn't going to, like... I said there was going to be a sex motel. <laughs> like... <laughs> For the high school kids. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the game has a level of, like, even... The, Shouldn't is, their dormitory just already be a sex motel for them? Like Theoretically, <laughs> like, it's a bunch of doors that lock... Like, what, what is the difference between that and a hotel in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hotels do you stay at? I just need a door that locks. I need to protect myself it's from interlopers. It's a door that locks in a frame that's not attached to a wall. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like, uh... The, okay, no matter how far you go down somebody's, like, friendship tree, you never just, like, outright bone... Uh, and like I, that's the level of restraint that I honestly just expect from dating Sims and visual novels because mm-hmm. that's just typically as far as it goes. Yep. And then like I walked into a castle wall and there was a fucking pink hotel with a sign on the door that said like "Hey, bone for twenty bucks," <laughs> and I was like, uh, <laughs> uh, like that honestly surprised me. God. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> how about that sewer platforming game? <laughs> That's a mechanical thing, technically. We do need to, we need to, we do need to swoop on back around. We're talking about the trials eventually, because there's some more games. Yeah, we'll get back to and more things. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I found that to be, like, genuinely hilarious. It was, yes. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> so the setup is, for people listening... Is in like before the first trial when you're all trying to escape, as people would mm-hmm. in this situation, you find like a manhole cover that leads to a sewer that you go down and you find an escape route through the sewer, which then it takes you to like a side scrolling platformer mini game to like traverse the sewer. But it has like the slipperiest, like, goofiest, weirdest controls ever, and it's, like, impossible not to die in, like, ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, because, like, generally speaking, if you do something and you lose, and then you do it again, you go a little bit further before you lose, uh, my first attempt, I got, I survived for about ten seconds, and my second attempt, I survived for about three. Yeah. Like, it was, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is literally impossible. And not have me on the hook for very long. I managed to get to the point where it, it spells out words with the explosive coins, and then it was just, I think that was, like, the actual hard wall, unless there's some cheat way about that. Oh, that wait, did it say clear? Yes. Okay, you made it to the end of the game. If you were able to push the door open on the other side of those exploding coins, yeah. you would have gotten the alternate ending where everyone graduates. Really? The good ending. Fuck. I know. Oh. You were so close. I did you try close. it more than twice? Like, did you go back? I tried it one more time. Or actually, no, I tried it two more times. Okay, all right. Yeah, after that. I could have gotten there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had done it four times, <laughs> you think I was a kind of fucking chump? God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the actual, like, not, this is in, in no way attempted to be degrading because they put their focus exactly where their focus needs to be, but anything that wasn't, like, the actual non-stop debates or the, the the UI interfaces in terms of scrolling through text and things like the monopad, yeah. like it it seemed like it was as good as it could possibly be while staying cheap. Like I and they they, they, <laughs> they did everything they could to make it be cheap and also be fun, mm-hmm. uh, like a sex motel. Yeah, like a sex motel. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, if if you're going to have if 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 you have shitty platformer controls and are going to put like almost no effort into it, why not make it literally a joke about that and make it completely impossible to do? Right. Uh, if you're going to have like 3D world traversal 
uh, where that has like you know actually good uh, shit. What's the word? Le- like like skins on everything. Texturing. Yeah, the textures in this game are really good. Modeling not so much. Uh, and yeah, it kind of gave up on it. Yeah, it kind of gave up on the modeling real quick. Uh, like the pop-up book look. Not just the pop-up book look, but just ev- ev- every everything that isn't the textures. There mm. just isn't a lot going on in the world. Yeah, it has like a diorama look. Yeah, it's like a PS2 game, but with the textures of a PS4 game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I quite liked it actually. It was unique. If you put Shuichi outside, and the protagonist of the Talos Principle, and then had them <laughs> run a foot race, who do you think would win? <laughs> The Oof. protagonist of the Talos Principle. I don't know, man. Shuichi goes pretty quick He outside. doesn't go as fast as the Talos Principle robot. <laughs> Even sprinting? I feel not like we need to close. actually have a... Like... I think it's not even close. <laughs> like, the Talos Principle guy goes way faster. <laughs> okay. I am with Andy. I just don't think it's as extreme. Right. I think I think it would be a like, race. Because, like, the, the Talos Principle guy moves really fast to begin with, and then when you sprint with him, it's, like, ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, he, does. He, goes, he goes ludicrously fast. Yeah. And I feel like it's just because there's a lot more space that it feels like uh, Shuichi's not moving at Mach 4. Hmm. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah the, but the only reason I started talking about walking at all was because the physical, in addition to the, the actual, like, design of the models in the space, the the controls of just moving around are also really weird. For reference, I played this on PC with, like, a Steam controller. Okay. Uh, I tried it with the 360 controller and preferred the Steam controller. That's unique. <laughs> thank thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I felt like I had, I had more control over the little dot thing that you can move around. You had to do some weird stuff with it to get it to work. Uh, but, like, I don't know. This It just felt... It's kind of sloshy. It, it felt it, it. felt like I was moving around in all dimensions, like I was in a pool that was very viscous. For me, it felt like the analog sticks should have been switched. Like one of them made you like, like look back and forth, and the other one moved the reticle. And it like it took me a while to like get it down because I was always want to move the opposite stick. Mm-hmm. That was like the big thing for me. Yeah, but yeah. Luckily, all these things are comparatively not but very important. I, I think, uh, from what I've seen of the older games, they controlled and looked like this. Interesting. So, I, I think it's just a carryover yeah. from those. The, it's not, because um, if you go into the menus, there's an option to change the control scheme. Uh, well, I'm talking about, like, the like the 3D environment with oh, the 2D oh, okay. pop-ups and I stuff. understand. Never mind. Yeah, that is true. Uh, but in the control scheme, you can choose between shooter controls and Danganronpa as the other option. I saw this. <laughs> I was afraid. Yeah, Danganronpa controls are just like uh, like PC shooters before mouse look controls, oh God. where you like move left, you like strafe with their own buttons, and your left analog stick controls like your head movement it's really strange wait of course it was like this that makes perfect sense because the first game in the series was a psp game with yeah. one analog stick mm. yeah so you have the so dang and ranpa is an option to go for controls which is what i was like trying to think of there when we were talking about that god poor psp <laughs> that was the <laughs> way psp like didn't have a second analog stick was the, a really stupid move. Like, I don't know what they really thought, because the first thing they did after that console release was just port a thousand PS2 games to it, and I'm like, eh. That is a really weird decision. Yeah, it seems strange. And that was our cutting-edge commentary uh, that people made on, at the release of the PSP <laughs> like ten was, years ago. Yeah, like, in, no, it was more than that. Oh, God. It I was than... in junior high when it came out. Oh, fuck. Yeah. We're gonna die. Yep. Sure. Yeah. In the killing game. <laughs> once we get through the class trial. So, in the class trial, <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of other things uh, that I do want to talk about, like, in terms of the, uh, like, Ga- little mini games they shove in there, mm-hmm. uh, and particularly one that I thought was just kind of was dead on arrival for me, which was the Hangman's Gambit. Anybody have any fun with that? No, <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit. No, yeah, it was just like annoying. Yeah, it was either way too simple, where you just knew what it was when you went in, or it was a word that no one had ever said. 
and I had never heard of before. What the fuck is a ropeway? Oh, yeah. Anyone, please, what the hell is a ropeway? I guess I now know what a ropeway is, but... But the fuck? What the fuck? Like... <laughs> That felt so unfair. I just had to guess letters. What if I uh, maybe like ropeways are very common in Japanese culture, and there's just like a different word for it over there that I'm gonna be like, oh yes, the ropeway, <laughs> in the same way that we were like, oh yeah, monster truck rally. And put that in. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> and you know, I could see someone in in I don't know, freaking Jamaica being like monster truck rally. Like, what does that even mean? It's just three words that you picked out of a hat. Um, yeah, sure, but like. Uh, it the biggest fuck you to me. The biggest fuck me was the sex motel. No, um, <laughs> was the fact that ropeway and zip line have the same number of letters. Oh no! <laughs> oh, and yeah. so I spent a lot of time just looking at it and trying to figure out what it would be, and that was the conclusion I drew. But there were no Z's. No matter how hard I looked, there's not a single Z that went by. So yeah. Yeah, it's a little oversight. That was stupid. Yeah. Problems there. Um, was there a, a new game introduced in the fourth trial? No. Wait. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with what you said originally about the nonstop debates and the mass panic debates being sort of like the meat and potatoes mm -hmm. and kind of being the only ones that were like really good. Yeah, yeah. I like the sword ones. That one, yeah. I yeah, sword's agree, yeah. also fun. And I like the one, the part with the bullets, where you, the split debate thing. Those yeah, were, for opinion. some reason, like the most stressful part for me. Really? Yeah, I was like, I got it. Like, I, I don't know if this was true or not, but I was under the impression you had to fire your bullet before they said their key word. So I don't know if that was true or not, but that was that added the stress of like having to try to like flip through all the bullets in time to shoot it before they said the word. Right. Yeah. I actually like, uh... also don't know if that's true, but I was under the same impression. Yeah. So I don't. I'm not sure. It was good stress. It was good stress. If you're curious, the only differences between the difficulty modes, at least for, in terms of the logic puzzles, is just the number of bullets that you have. They just give you more bullets yeah. uh, if you if you up the difficulty. So it's kind of a misnomer to call it because what I was expecting, I even did the first trial twice for this reason. I was like, I wonder. You mad man. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of it. They make you save in the middle. That's true. Uh, so I only did the first half or whatever twice. But uh, I, I wanted to see if like the literal logic like if they would give you less information or something in the trial but and that's the not the stuff, case yeah. it's identical it's just you have to go through more bullets and you have to spend more time thinking about what evidence was presented in each of these objects which i think is actually a pretty good way to do that that didn't have to force them to record a bunch of different lines right. it's not what i expected but it's, but it was a, a neat way that sort of increased your mental load a little bit honestly the mo especially early game the most stressful like part of any of these evidence moments whenever whenever witness testimony was like a part and it would say like like you know blank person's account i would just try to remember who everyone's names were yeah. other than like kibo and yeah we we talked about we also came to the conclusion that kibo was an unforgettable name <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah this is this is the thing i think we've talked about this at least a couple of times but i remember specifically on um the trauma center episode that things like diseases and Japanese names are hard for Americans. Uh, and man, oh man, is this game full of Japanese names. Uh, and not only that, but, and I mean, this might just be, I don't have a large sample size, but, uh, they, a lot of them sound, have the same vowel sounds in them. Like, tons of them do. Kokichi, Shuichi. K names. Yeah. Kor Korikyo. Uh, some other ones. <laughs> That's exactly my point. <laughs> yeah. And then Gonta. <laughs> yeah. Good. Anyway, um, how many did you finish, JJ? How many trials? Oh, God. I think, like, two and a half. I was say, add a half to whatever. I, say, like, I found like that at the third one, it started getting harder for me. And it, it started kind of getting harder in the way... What, like the bad way where it would be like I just didn't understand what they were asking or like how they were phrasing things was confusing to me or like I had to like look something up and I was like 
Oh, right. right. I, I completely misunderstood what was being asked of me. Yeah. yeah. The worst that they ever got from me was in the third trial. Um, there's the the very cool uh, seance scene that I loved. It was set in a dark room with nothing in it. And then in the trial, they show you a picture of an empty room and go, where was this thing? And you go... Uh, it's a it's a brown square, and they want you to to point to a particular part of corner of the room, and I knew that, and I clicked on it, and it was like no, and I was like uh oh, so I moved. I was like maybe the room's not in the same. Maybe this is a perspective from like a different side of the room. <laughs> so I tried another corner, and it was like uh uh-uh. uh, and so I had to go back to the other corner just on a lark. I was like I'm just gonna try it again, I guess, and I just missed it the first time, I guess. Yeah. So, I don't know. Some of the stuff that they ask is a little bit vague. I feel like a lot of it can be solved by just, like, jamming bullets mm. at it until it eventually works. Uh, it, it, it rarely gets unfair, but when it, it is that way, it just feels really bad. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you're on the timer and, like, you see your health ticking down. Yeah, but mostly it avoids that kind of thing. Timer's also, in general, pretty generous. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I don't think I... The, the one time that I failed was when I ran out of time on the uh, on the game. I didn't understand the Hangman's Gambit. Gotcha. Not knowing the word. Yeah, like, I usually hate time limits a lot, but the fast pace of the game made it so, like, I wasn't even ever looking at the timer. Like, I was just trying to, like, intake all the information that was flying across the screen and yeah. didn't even think about it, mm. which was nice <laughs> for me. We got anything else? I've got a thing, but it's not really relevant to mechanics anyway. That's fine. Is it relevant to thrills, chills, or kills? <laughs> it's relevant to I, I guess I guess thrills. If I had to put it within that category, it's right, a cool. thrill-related statement. Uh, we're di- this is how we're going to separate the episode into three parts. <laughs> we're going to talk about thrills. We're going to talk about chills. Please go on. <laughs> Andy, was that enormous sigh in reference to thrills or chills? Both. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a hard edit. I'm going to have to like literally cut everything and separate it into three categories. Very hard. Man. So the funniest moment of the entire game for me that I played through... Fuck the Patriots. <laughs> I, that was very good. Uh, I came, but it came very early on, and it's unclear to me whether it was intentional... The more I think about this game, the more that I respect it in retrospect, which makes me think that it was intentional. But right at the start, uh, before they restart the game again and right. have you in a locker again, uh, like I think it's the very first time the game ever actually prompts you to save. Uh, they have everyone, they force everyone to that gymnasium when you're running from the Exiles, uh, and then do the little flash for you, yeah. and then go through like a horrifying, like, 10-second extended, like, mental destruction sequence with, like, epilepsy flashing and shrieks of pain and, like, all this complete nonsense. Uh Good stuff. Uh, And then the game hard smashes to straight black, would you like to save? With just, like, a little (laughs) save prompt over the end there. And I think that set the, like, just absolutely, like, eclectic, just all over the place tone of this game so early, so hard for me that I, I literally, when that happened, I like sat down the controller and like took a break. Like I didn't even <laughs> save. Like I just like put it down. And I was like, <sighs> it's like you need to give me some time to take some breathers. Video game. I I need some processing to to really take all this in. And the game really rarely gives you processing time one way or the other because that, that's what keeps up the tension very often, both in and out of trials. Everything switches very fast all over the place in tones of every possible extreme. Um, and I, I, just, I just thought that was that was a really emblematic moment of me that set the tone, the tone of the game long term. And I wanted to know if any of you guys also had situations like that where, <laughs> and whether or not you think that they were intended. Uh, I definitely noted that one. Um, I, I didn't like... I didn't have quite as strong of a reaction. Basically, my reaction could be boiled down to the white guy blinking gif. Uh, where it just, like, a bunch... Because that all happens in the span of, like, 
three minutes. Yeah. And I just, it like, and it black screened in the save thing, and I'm just like, okay, like, we're moving on, I guess. <laughs> I feel like if an old person played this game, it would give them motion sickness. I feel like that's true of all games, though. No, oh, true. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I, I didn't have as strong of a reaction either, I don't think, to anything, but I did the... <clears throat> Just the opening of the game really struck me, where it's just like, everything starts, and then they're like, oh, this is all fucked up and wrong, let's restart it. <laughs> and then they do. Yeah. <laughs> and then they neuralize you. Yeah, that, that was really weird. And <laughs> it sets the tone right off the bat. Did you listen to the music at the start of the game, like the what's playing in the background? I'm sure that I did, but I don't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, this was like two and a half weeks ago. Fair, right fair. It's literally like... An, like a, a TV announcer, like whispering into a microphone in the background of like all their cool jazz riffs or whatever, just going like, "You're at the threshold of an amazing adventure." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like this person is the protagonist. Like it's literally just like statements like that, just straight up into it. Uh, and at the time, I did I did not give that man much credit. Uh, but uh, is it the same voice that says like we are all that remains <laughs> the of a once powerful yeah. nation? The Mario <laughs> Cubs theme. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is that oh, man. Good. Yeah, that guy, true star. <laughs> if you were that guy, let us know. We'll send you a good job email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the music, I wanted to bring up the soundtrack. As while there is not a ton of different uh, tracks on the soundtrack, all of them are fantastic. Yeah. Like, the music in this is, like, the perfect, like, visual novel music, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, the main... I can't remember what the song's called, but they, they give you, like, a little name. Oh, beautiful. I think the one that you're talking about is A Beautiful Lie. Yeah, like, the, the main track, just while you're walking around, is, like, perfect, like, quintessential visual <laughs> novel music. It's yeah. great. It's either that one or Making Friends. Both of them are great. Yeah. So, I, you know, either one. Just the daytime it. walking music yeah. in general. Yeah. It's very good. For me, Monokuma's, Mr. Monokuma's Lesson V3 is, like, so fucking good, and I just want to hear somebody freestyle over it. Like, oh, God, it's the best. Uh, I'm sure that exists. Uh, Have you I checked? Mean, I, I haven't actually looked. Okay. I could, though. <laughs> If you want to send us video of you freestyling over Mr. Monokuna's Lesson V3. Uh, I would, if somebody actually did that, no matter how good or bad they were, mm -hmm. I would straight up just be like, what's the next game you want us to cover? 100% <laughs> like, we'll do it. Like, <laughs> You will receive no judgment, only power and yep. influence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Are we trying to end the podcast in reverse right now? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Everything is, is this so a new thing we're trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. I thought that the music was great, and I also thought that it, it's like almost a continuing trend. For some reason, like everything we've talked about this year, we've at some point been like, "Well, this music was just fucking good." Uh, but yeah, this game had like literally nothing but standout tracks, and even the things that were used for ambiance had like either something memorable about them or were almost just silence, so it was like very far ends of the spectrum, uh, and it, it helped sort of set the tone for a lot of the stuff. That's all I had. Nah, I'm pretty sure we're done. Yeah, good job. We have right. final thoughts. Yeah, we should have final thoughts. That is a good point. So do we have final thoughts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The tone that I want games this stupid to have is often somewhere within the orbit of Trauma Center. Like, Trauma Center is the amount of, like, takes itself seriously, stupid fun that I look for in, like, Japanese dramatic nonsense. And this game overshot this by just so many yards. Like, just, like... Super Smash Brothers home run contest distances. <laughs> but, uh... And while that absolutely made the game, like, really rub me the wrong way almost constantly, uh, just because it's not my market doesn't mean that it is not good. And I have to give this game an enorm enormous amount of respect for being, like, actively terrifying, intelligent when it wanted to be, funny in the most unexpected ways possible. Like, 
it is good at what it's trying to do. So if you can look at the promotional images for this game and like watch the trailers from it and not immediately be so like moralistically put off. Like if you don't have like <laughs> the Christian dad response of looking at this, I say go for it because there's a chance that you'll like it. Uh, but yeah, it's if you can get if you can get past the friction, you'll find things to love. Uh I really liked this game. Um, I felt like this game was good in all the ways we said we wish 999 was. And being by the same developer, you know. Um, so they've, they're improving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I liked all the over-the-top bullshit. Um, I liked the characters. I liked the art. I liked the music. And... Uh, it does, it does fall a little bit short. There's some problems here and there, uh, some things that I didn't like. I felt like it was too long. They had a little bit too much uh, padding in there or, like, stuff I thought could have been cut out. But too overall, much yeah, too much stuffing. Speaking of padding and stuffing, too many, like, breasts-related insults. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were very, very, very many. <laughs> Yeah, overall positive. Thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, as we revealed in my coming out ceremony at the beginning of this uh, podcast, uh, I just apparently do like visual novels. Um, I am the kind of person who, while I don't like when a game takes a long time to get to like the next thing for me to do, if the game's not actively asking me to do some tedious bullshit in the meantime, I can tend to I, I tend to be able to uh, sort of get behind that more because it'll it's more relaxed that way. I feel like I'm watching something rather than performing a boring action. Mm -hmm. uh, and this game and it's uh, the fact that it has like an auto mode for the text was kind of a godsend in that regard. Like as far as uh, visual novels go, so I was able to sort of take in this game as watching a season of a television show and then playing Phoenix Wright. Uh, and as far as that goes, I thought it was was great. I acknowledge to some extent that I like this game for the same reason that I like the movie Wanted, uh, or like <laughs> <laughs> The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which are two mid-2000s era movies that are really bad, but amazing fun to watch. Uh, I feel like this is this is the trash TV of video games, and uh, where the game part of this is really solidly executed and feels like something that a lot of thought was put into and remains engaging throughout, uh, the narrative could use some work to be regarded as good, but is like damn intriguing as it stands. So. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed my time with it. I'm kind of sad that I didn't have more time so I could actually finish it. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, the narrative will be surprising, like, less in the way of, like, Luke, I am your father, and more in the way of, like, oh, this man is flashing me on the street. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That would be shocking. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's very, it's very shocking. Thank you for listening to No Clip this week. What are we talking about next time? Next time, uh, we're going to be talking about WarioWare as we transition ourselves from Mystery May to Wad June. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. May, uh, all of our contact information is on noclippodcast.com, uh, noclippodcast.net, splattershot.pro, a myriad ways to get a hold of us. <laughs> Uh, make sure you give us a rating and a review on iTunes uh, if you have a shred of kindness in your heart. Uh, <laughs> find us on YouTube, watch our episodes, smack that like button. Tell your friends. Smack your friends. Smack, smack your, your friends. friends. <laughs> Bye, Hanara. <laughs> <Inara. laughs> <Damn it. laughs> So long. Farewell. I hated those catchphrases. <laughs>